set? Uh, a dive computer. So it just records how deep we are, how long we've been under the water for, so we can keep track of our, our profiles and keep nice and safe. I've got my GoPro. Yeah. That's so we can just record as we go down the depth gradient underwater what the densities of the kinner are. The GoPro for the Pro. Just uh, special waterproof paper. What? Yeah. So we've got permanent record. No. Yeah. Is it? <laughs> oh, cool. Is that right on? Yeah. Wow. All right, Skipper, you happy with the ground? The hardest bit's getting a good spit. Going to record this. <laughs> How's the visibility today? There's definitely some visibility. <laughs> so I'm not quite sure if your visibility is yes, is it entirely accurate? <laughs> All right, team. All Thank right. you very much. We got 11, 12. 11, 12. Beautiful. Nice, nice. You got a max, max one hour. Not 90. How do you feel about this? Well, it's exciting, and it's a really good project. It's um, it, it's something that has to be done. We've got to care for the environment down underneath what we can't see. I'll be here while they're in the water and that's really important from a safety perspective. Uh, they need to know that there is a, a base on top for them to come back to uh, and also I can plot where they are. I can follow their bubbles and I can um, uh, act as a liaison uh, in case of any, anything going wrong. So on the sounder we've plotted our position which is number 51 uh, and our divers are pretty much directly below us. So uh, easy to return back and find this exact location within about four or five metres. Diver under the water, bubbles are a good sign. We at least know they're breathing. Yeah, it was awesome. We've had a really cool day on the water. Uh, we did three different dives. We found two good spots. And uh, yeah, plenty to chat about once we get off the boat and get the gear sorted out. Yeah. How was today? Today was fantastic. I just was coming back on the boat with a grin like the size of my whole head thinking about we've done it it's been a year since we started chatting myself and Adam had a beer and we talked about how do we go about doing a project like this and who do we get involved and where we start sure so we we hopped in um, did three dives today and of those three dives it was great so two uh, were really really useful um, we found two locations which was good and then we used our, our third dive to set up the first one so we're pretty much ready to start working See you guys yeah loads quite a few Ah, oh, there was all kinds of little um, triple fins, really cool little fish that live on the bottom. There was quite a few snapper, some goat fish, some red mochi, quite a few good bits to see around. So. What we've been looking for in particular today is areas where you have a, a seabed, a bottom composition where really kelp would love to thrive. So the, the beautiful thing about kelp is it sits in that ecosystem and it's a, it's a wonderful, amazing plant. Um, but also crucially it's a habitat for loads of other marine life. So you're looking for areas that are quite rocky, um, have quite large boulders, those kind of bits and pieces. So we're trying to stay away from just purely sand. It's those rocks and boulders that we like that the kelp can grab onto and, and really get itself settled. Um, but what you tend to find around particularly the north coast of the island and an ongoing problem in the Gulf in general are, are what we call kinna barrens, um, which is really what, what the project is looking to help tackle. So the first site that we went to today was uh, just outside Enclosure Bay. Um, we anchored up there, we did a couple of dives, we spent a long time in the water, more than an hour, just checking out what was down there. Uh, Tim had a really good look around, did some sampling, measured what was kind of on the, on the seabed um, and decided on the spot that we were going to use for our first site. Uh, and then, 
Oh, so we haven't measured out exact boundaries. Like it's a general area that we're going to start. We've got a line that we can go anywhere west of. Um, and it's in a really easy kind of snorkeling distance from Enclosure Bay. So it'll probably end up being 40 or 50 meters long on one side and maybe 40 or 50 meters square. But um, it's flexible. We haven't actually put down a, a marker at the bottom. We've just kind of decided sort of the boundary where it would start on one side. Uh, super satisfying to have the first one picked out and know where it's going to be. And there's a lot, a lot of kinna in there. So the first clear out dive that we do, which is for June the 22nd and 23rd, I think that weekend, there's going to be a lot of work to do. There's a lot of kinna there. Um, so that was fantastic. Then later on after lunch, we dived in an area kind of just beside that, which is going to be the control area. So it's going to be the area that we don't do any work in, but we'll kind of document what's there and then we'll document it again at the end of the project. And that'll just be like compare and contrast to the actual gardening side that we're going to be doing the gardening work in. So that was great. That was kind of a lot of the day was spent getting that all figured out and kind of mapped out and everything. And then the second site we went to is called Repo Bay, which is just around the corner from Palm Beach to the east, like down towards, you know, uh, the bottom end. A fantastic site and really interesting, but we decided once we were there that it's just a little bit too far away from Palm Beach to be able to swim out to, and especially swim back to safely after you're tired from doing an hour's work or whatever. So uh, we had a look at Repo from the boat and decided that to scratch it and, and not even get in the water. So then we came back to Plan C. We had a Plan C, which was along the west side of Little Palm Beach, just that rocky kind of cliff um, outreach there all the way to the pines. So we had a dive in there and we had a look around and sad to say, there's a lot of Kinnebarn in there, but there's some really suitable areas. Yeah, so from Nudie Bay, if you were to kind of swim out from Nudie Bay, all the rocks along the left-hand side. Well, fantastic. And I've chatted a lot of people who are kind of supporters of the project who've said, oh, can we put a side out at little palm beach out by nudie bay and i said i don't know if it'll work or not the really good news is it does it's a it's a fantastic site so it looks like that's going to be our second site i suppose the good news about both of those sites is there's still areas of healthy kelp at both of them and that'll help kind of reseed the areas that we kind of clean up so it's good that there's kinnebarn kind of right next door to some remaining kind of healthy kelp hopefully that'll help bring the kelp back into the kind of the kelp garden areas that we work in it's pretty alarming, the state of the kinnebarns out there and how widespread they are. Yeah, I'm relieved that we're getting the project going, actually. My overwhelming kind of response to it all is, you know, hallelujah that we're actually getting started. Like, it's not too late. We can do something about it.